ma'am uh, priyadarshini ma'am shall i make you the uh, host so that you you will be able to share the screen yes please yes Yes, ma'am. Hope my screen is visible. Yes, ma'am. Can you make it uh, full screen, ma'am, so that it will be clear even better? Yes. okay so yes. good evening everyone um it's um, really great pleasure for me to address a group of um, enterprising innovators who is going to think in the terms of innovations on the prestigious day of world ip day which is the april 26th we from the ip fraternity pride ourselves for being in this segment of protecting innovations and hence uh, it is a honor for me to give you an awareness program and to create an awareness within these young minds who are especially coming from the academic background which is where exactly the roots of innovation lie stronger and from here you grow out to become innovators and you all grow out to become entrepreneurs who became the flag bearers of um, patents trademark and all intellectual property so thank you to the prestigious institute prince shri venkateshwara engineering and arts and science college for giving me this opportunity and the aim of today's uh, session will be more focused on an awareness on ipr and because as students and faculty involved here i'm going to touch base on the concept of ipr that can be applied on your day to day life but ip uh, is a whole big subject matter and anyone who is interested i would advise them to read further on the subjects of ip and gain knowledge but today is only going to be an introductory session and i have filled the session with as many information as possible that i could direct your interest towards this field so like i said we will have four sessions today one is an intellectual property rights overview the different types of intellectual property rights and then we'll have what is ipr management especially for students and institutions and startups because you are co coming from the institutes innovation council so a few points pointers for all of them and the final session i would like to take any question and answers that you have now to understand what an intellectual property right is basically it is a right that a person who has used his mind or applied his knowledge gets when he create a new and innovative product or a service or a brand or a quality or any kind of creative expression so basically when one uses his own intelligence and he creates something new and novel then that has to be given a certain type of uh, protection and those are called the intellectual property rights now these are not a new concept these concept existed even before uh, centuries when during the times of kingdoms there used to be a special um, exclusion right given to a particular person especially in, in if you see the kings who have specific cooks and when they come up with a new recipe the king would award them a certificate which says that only that particular cook is supposed to make that dish in within his kingdom no one is supposed to do it so that is where the concept of recognizing one's creative expression or one's creative intelligence got its standing and later on during the british rule there are a lot of acts that have also been passed called the intellectual property and design act etc which gave a legal validity so it's no longer the magnanimity of the king to grant a right 
rather it is a right of an individual who comes up with this creative innovation to get the right in his name hence a legal validity was granted and then a frameworks was set up eventually it took us almost um, you know 70 odd years to create different frameworks for different types of intellectual property rights and different laws were existed different laws were amended and passed in the parliament then india took cognizance of the growing innovation around it and we said okay ipr is going to be preliminary for us in terms of growth and innovation if we have to move from a developing country to a developed country so india in the last 15 20 years started doing a lot of activities and if you now see from the academic segment there's a lot of interest that has come around this ipr so very simply an ipr is an intangible asset an intangible asset is an asset that i cannot see in my hand so if i have created a new um, product i can see the product in my hand if i created a new poem i can write down the poem and i can see the poem in my hand so basically one that comes out of my imagination or my intelligence that is an asset although i see the poem or the product in my hand it i cannot say that it is a property right so these are not tangible ones where you you give a poem to another person doesn't mean you're selling the poem the poem still belongs to you but you're giving another person to write the right to use the poem so something which is intangible something which i cannot remove from one person and give it something which i only transfer via an agreement so this is called as an intangible right and the different types of ipr arises based on the different types of expression so if there is an idea and i'm able to express the idea then it is protected by a copyright if it is an idea and it is in the form of science and innovation then i file a patent for it if it is an idea which gives me a brand name then it is a trademark and if it is an idea which gives me a newness in the appearance of the product then it is a design so i will take you through the different concepts of ipr and how it is applicable in these different names so that you will be able to use it into your day to day uh, life now why would um, a country like india or any country in the world give a legal validity to intelligence isn't it um, isn't it just uh, something that the science and development r and d should take into account why is there a legal validity because earlier we know that when somebody in in um, researches and innovating they publish a paper and the paper will give them a score and the number of papers a person publishes based on that that particular scientific community gives them a credit and they become you know someone as an expert but today times are changing it's no longer that you need to be recognized by a group of individual here it has become your right and you can prove and get your right by saying that this is my innovation apart from that there are a lot of reasons why a country should also legally protect innovators one is it will encourage other innovators to keep innovating new things because you innovate and you don't get the commercial value of it after 3 4 5 innovations you lose the interest to innovate because you don't see anything that is coming back to you in return so what you tend to do is okay i'm i think i'm done with innovation no you have to encourage innovators and when will an innovator be encouraged is only when his innovations are appreciated and he also gets a commercial benefits of it he should get have a venue to earn money out of his innovations apart from this one more reason is we should not infringe on another person's innovation so we we have been as a community for for some years before that we've always been you know copycats who used to just copy a particular innovation do some reverse engineering and be able to you know ride the tide but today that is not what is possible we have to be forced innovators so we'll have to start thinking out of the box so we should not infringe on another person's patent and that is also one of the reason why there is a legal standing or a legal right for innovation and ipr protection now the whole concept of ipr like i said is an international concept so um, because of trade that is happening between india and many other countries you know that when an a citizen of a, of another country comes to india his ip should also be respected and when a citizen of india files a patent in us or europe his ip should also be respected hence this is this has come up as a 
for the whole international concept and ip is governed internationally by world intellectual property organization up based on that based on their guidelines and based on their recommendations every participating country has to have all act to protect ipr for its citizen and for any citizen of the world so these are the different acts that india has enacted and we have the patent act the design act the trademark act geographical indication act all of these acts are there and these have been passed by the parliament these are actually for past 20 years all of these acts are in force and we have seen a lot of uh, patents trademarks being granted day and day out now depends on the type of intellectual property rights there are many intellectual property rights i have listed the most important apart from these are only one or two which may not be very applicable but these six to seven ips are very very important that um, you know we will definitely need um, at some point in time so first we look at trademarks trademarks is more applicable if you are an entrepreneur who is willing to start a business so you can come from the science and innovation you can come from the management field anywhere but you are going to start a company so what is it the first thing that you will look when you start a company it can be a product or a service company we will all look at finding a very good brand name of the company right a trademark protects that brand name for yourself so if you look at these logos here i know a few of the logos have their name but two of the logos does not have a name into it but i'm sure 90% of this um, you know here members present here would be able to tell me what these two logos are right because that is what their brand and their identity has been survived which means that they have been designed in such a way so that the customers recognize them by their brand name so such a brand value is created because of trademark imagine that the logo tata that is here tomorrow tata comes up with a new concept or a new business a new product how many of us would be interested or motivated to go and buy that particular product so tomorrow they come up with tata mobile phones how many you think will go and register and book for the first lot of tata phones at least at least um 20 30% of us and where is a new company that you and i start company comes and they launch their own phone how many do you think will be willing to go and buy that uh, one of us at max will be interested and say okay we don't know what this new phone is somebody is launching they let's wait let's see how the company you know um performs and then we will buy whereas if tata launches a phone i'm sure more than 30 of us will immediately book and why is that um, hesitant for a new company versus tata it's because tata has served their built their business value by serving their customers the right attitude so when the brand name tata comes it is not created overnight or in a year it is created for over the years the way they have built each business the way they have satisfied customers in each business the way they have stood by their integrity and honesty so that is what makes a customer believe so the brand value tata itself is very very big it's sometimes bigger than just one business unit probably tata it, the brand name tata is much bigger valued than just tata it company right so that is the importance of a trademark so any of these trademarks that you or your clients or your friends who wants to tomorrow start an entrepreneur becoming an entrepreneur starting a new organization then the first thing is they have to coin a relatively new and a unique trade name that talks about the product or the service and since it is something that the customer is going to recognize the very first thing is they have to file a trademark application and register and protect that trade name now some of the advice that i give to my clients who come to me for a logo or for a trade name is i tell them do not be similar just because i start tata do not make another word for cata or pata and tell me that i'm going to compete with them and try to copy the logo never be um, you know trying to be similar or even deceptively similar try to be very unique be very creative do not use any common words do not use any official words or official symbols that are already known so many of the names today those that you see on the left hand side 
most of them when they started their company and had the name uh, they were just the, that group of people were the only people who would have known about it or you know probably decided to go with it but today they have created a brand value for you so even when you start a company don't be hesitant that it is not a very fancy that company's name will become fancy once your service or your products become more quality and um, reach the right attitude so the uh, most advice is these are some of the stories that i have around trademark that i share one i will share with you is definitely about pepsi now if you see pepsi was initially when the company launched it as a soda it was not for a consumer product it was a medical product so basically they designed this particular drink to help or aid in digestion and someone coming from science background or even your 12th standard science you would know the enzyme pepsin which is a digestive enzyme which helps in digestion so that is how they launched so initial word is pepsin but later on uh, when they realized that this product is more of a consumer product they rebranded and today the word pepsi which is very widely used has its origin so that is how a trademark or a trade name itself you know keeps originating and because it is the value of a company the trade name belongs to the company and it is a form of an ipr the next important concept of um, intellectual property rights is the design application now you see when you buy a product you you can compare any two competitor products you can take top ramen you can take maggi you see the packaging you see the colors that are used so although it is basically a pack that is similar or same the moment you see the red color versus the yellow color you will easily able to identify which is what the brand is right this is in terms of the design of the packaging the same thing we can also apply in terms of any product and the exterior design that is very pleasing to the eye of a customer or very unique to the eye of the customer is protected by the design set um i can simply take any example but i am going to take the example of a water bottle because we all tend to buy water bottle and you need you can know all the three brands that i have just cited here like the bisler is aquafina and kingly what is different in all the three products is a simple mineral water which is passing through an oro technology it removed of all the you know important uh, i'm sorry it removed of all microorganism purified added with enhanced minerals bottled and sold but why would a company take so much um, you know treasure or importance in designing the shape of the bottle because it for somebody who is used to drinking kinle holding the bottle in the center will not be happy holding an aquafina bottle because the design of the bottle is different the same way somebody who is used to bisleri will not like kinle so the moment the design of a particular product is what i have an idea to recognize to be recognized by my client or the customer then i would focus on that and this design itself since it is new only for the exterior look of the product there will be a protection granted which is what is the design protection one of the most important example that is what how important the design is for people who have used hair removal creams come to know that you know 10 15 years back we had the an french brand which was launched the an french brand had a spatula which is very flat and later on when we launched they came up with a spatula which is an h shaped spatula the advantage is that about the s shaped spatula is you can apply the cream as well as you can scoop out the cream using the front and back of the spatula now that is a design patent because it's only the look and feel of the product but you know what happened eventually is that which product took over the market because of its easy application people started to use it it was less messy it gave a very smart decision and we have I mean an french had to wait for 15 years because the design is protected for 15 years so but they could not wait a business will not be able to wait for 15 years without any revenue so eventually today i don't see i haven't seen an french product anywhere i am only seeing wheat being advertised and sold and they have captivated the market so that important is a very small design for a company for an organization so even in your whichever background 
of education you are from whatever project you're working on any small thing will actually make a big difference if, if look through in the right direction so don't ignore any change any process change that you might be working on it could actually be an innovation it could be a landmark innovation too but definitely it will be a worth of invent innovation that can be protected under an ipr now for design the most important applications is packaging of the boxes uh, in medical devices people are using insulin pen so that is a design application jewelry designing dress garment designings all of these come under design protection as well now next i would move on to copyrights for copyrights the most important concept is it has to be an original literary dramatic musical or artistic work so basically it's an expression right i i talk in a particular way describe the beauty of the moon or the nature i am not protecting the nature i have been protecting the way i have expressed my nature so i compare the nature with something i compare the pleasantness of the nature with the feeling that i have or the beauty of a moon with something right so those kind of expressions are being protected under copyright now a cinematographic film sound recording all of these are protected under copyright and the most important thing is especially since you're all in the academic setup you will have to submit lot of projects and reports so plagiarism is an important concept that needs to be weeded out you're not supposed to copy anything word by word or verbatim right so you, even though the concept is same so if you have a book on some electrical engineering or fluid mechanics and there is an another person who is writing about fluid it is not two concepts of fluid mechanics is the same fluid mechanics the two authors are presenting it in a different way nobody has the right over fluid mechanics this the author a has a right of how he is represented it and author b has the right of how he is represented henceforth when you are writing on any project or anything it's your way of writing that is what is important instead of the concept the concept is same it's applicable to everybody so do not copy paste any work be very creative understand the work and then you write it in your presentation so this is what copyright is now in terms of copyright creative expression um the indian performing rights society limited iipr is the lim is the rights which governs all the copyrights form uh, for the movie songs and compositions so today we know the importance of copyrights after a lot of royalty cases and a lot of cases where the music composers and um, singers are uh, you know asking that if you want to sing my song and if it is a commercial presentation you'll have to pay royalty right so this is being managed by the I iipr indian um, performing right society limited where you send them a letter telling that i want to use a b c d song and they'll tell you what is the royalty and then you pay the royalty and then you use it so this is what how the creative expression in the film film fraternity especially in the music segment is being managed now copyright is generally granted for 60 years after the life of life of the author so basically even if the author or the composer dies for the next 50 60 years his family will keep receiving copyrights so even if there is a novel and the author dies his family will still be getting the royalty or the money for every sale of the book so it is a very good asset that one person leave lives behind for their family now next important concept is patents because see this is um, this i have pushed it to middle of the segment is because i'm going to talk a little more in detail about patent um, as i'm addressing a group of engineering as well as life science you know arts and science students who who have who will who will be exposed to patents eventually so what is a patent is a patent is a legal monopoly granted by the government to innovations in the field of science and technology okay especially one innovation which is new or novel which has some um, improvement and it is being commercially that you can sell it so these are the conditions for some product or process to be a uh, patented and why does patent happen like i said in the beginning of the session patent generally happens 
due to uh, to encourage scientific research to grant exclusivity and monopoly that means to uh, give the rights to the inventor who has invented it again stimulate new invention and pass the invention to the public domain that means like in the age old scenario where my great grandmother used to do some kind of uh, home technique to cure um, you know my stomach pain i never knew what it is because um, the that particular secret got lost after my grandmother my mother never learned it and today i don't know but i remember when my great grandmother used to give me a concoction which had some a b c d and when you take it you generally are relieved of any pain right so eventually we lose innovations we lose it and today again i have to try all my energy to see what is that particular magic drink that she was making so until and unless you pass that invention to the others inventions get lost in the tide of time and so a patent is a legal way Uh, or a very valid way of recording your invention and so the others will have access to that invention and when i read a particular invention that is happening in my field and i am into the research and development i don't have to repeat it it is already done he has given me the results now let me look at another improvement in that so that is how inventions get passed on now what is an invention every time i'm using the word invention invention is anything new or useful a process or a method it can be a machine or apparatus it has to be manufacturable so it cannot be something that i think in my mind it cannot be a theorem it cannot be um um a formula it has to be an article of man something that i can make and sell okay and in any of these even if it is an improvement it not be a new product it can be a small screw that has been invented in an existing product even that is an improvement if that particular joint hinge or a screw is giving it a 30 to 40% extra stability then that screw is an improvement so that is also an innovation it can also be patented so anything which is novel non obvious capable of industrial application and there are certain concepts which are not patentable if it does not fall under that category then it can be patentable now what are the inventions which are not patentable so this list change from every country we being a very socialistic country or social socio capitalistic country we have a list of things that we say it will never be patentable even if it is an invention one you invent a disease a device which causes humans harm to human or environment definitely not i cannot tomorrow make a device which will slaughter 100 chickens in a day it is harm to the environment so it can never be patented right similarly any invention relating to um, you know radioactive metals not patentable anything related to defense is not patentable nobody is going to give you the key to a new kind of a bomb or a kind of a pistol that you have created um, you know that can we use in the defense so nobody is going to do that so it cannot be a monopoly you cannot get the single rights to it and it's not patentable a method of agriculture is not patentable but agriculture methods and everything is protected under a different law and act so it is not a patent act there is a plant breeders right that protects it so these are some of the patent inventions that are not patentable now for you students or faculty who's who's thinking about new inventions or an improvement in the invention there are two way you can file a patent for it one it is a, a ordinary application as a provisional so i have a concept here i'm, I'm in my fourth year of my engineering or third year end and this is a concept i know it will definitely work then you file a provisional application it will give you 12 months time to file to work on the project to come up with the results and then file a detailed application so the time limit for a provisional to a complete is a 12 months time but you have already completed your innovation you are just yet to present it then you can directly file a complete application also the cost is same if you file a provisional for individual and for your college and all it is just 1600 rupees and when you file a complete also it is 1600 rupees you just pay only once in the application stage and the patent process is once you file your application within 18 months it gets published and then in 48 months you request for the patent to be granted 
and then the examiner takes up he will examine whether all the provisions are correct whether it is new novel improvement everything and if it is all in order he generally grants a patent to the applicant it can be yourself or to the college or the institute and you generally have the patent renewed every year paying a very small fees i think somewhere around 800 rupees per annum in case if he has any objections also he'll write to us we reply to the objections and it will be granted or rejected both scenarios can happen now this is what how i especially patents are being um, granted and prosecuted now other types of ipr include geographical indication trade secret and plant varieties now what is a geographical indication is basically there will be product which will which originates in a particular geography that means a place and because of that particular place that product has a very peculiar taste or a peculiar feature for example we you know salem mangoes very different from any other mangoes because of the soil the water in that geography right and similarly if you have tirupati ladoo made in tirupati by a specific process using that water that is originated in that geography has a very unique flavor similarly if you see the jasmine from madurai it's so different from the jasmine that you get in mysore so there are two different geographies the same almost the same variety so a geographical indication is a tag that is given to the product that gets that unique quality because of the geography and that can be only sold by that association for example the kanjivaram silk sari there will be an association of weavers of kanjivaram silk and they will be given the gi tag and that that is the tag that they will use for selling the kanjur nobody else can sell it as kanjuram silk sari similarly tirupati ladoo you cannot tomorrow have a shop so these are the list of geographical indication tags that are granted the blue pottery of jaipur chanderi fabric kach embroidery kanjuram silk mysore silk pochampalli silk all of these and many 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 more so um, these tags are not given to individual it's given to the cooperative right or an association now next is a trade secret a trade secret see, not all inventions are something that you have to publish and tell it to the world there are few inventions um, recipes especially that you have to keep it as a secret so one if you have an invention which instead of selling it to the world if it is kept as a secret is more valuable than that is what is a trade secret like the kfc um, this recipe or the secret spice that use it is a it is definitely a trade secret and one more interesting trade secret is the google search algorithm google search has an algorithm algorithm is a lot of factors that takes into account by which it is pulling out the most relevant document for every keyword that we do so who has the algorithm nobody it's the google secret algorithm nobody knows what is this algorithm that is why you see google is the lone single search uh, engine um, that is highly successful we had yahoo we have bing we had microsoft but you will always very comfortable with google search is because they are that algorithm is very secret and they keep on changing the algorithm fine tuning the algorithm so that is why somebody in the digital marketing marketing also they keep on changing the strategy to make their website come in the first right so it's not a fixed algorithm similarly coca cola's recipe you know it's three sachets which are manufactured in three different parts of the world comes to one part where it is opened and filled and even if you try to open and see what is there like reverse engineer that sachet it vaporizes when in contact with air so basically it's a recipe nobody knows what it is now plant breeders variety is if you have invented a new variety of a plant then that variety of a plant or a tree is actually protected so if um, in the agriculture field i have come up with a new brinjal or you you know about the pomato right potato tomatoes the pomato if i have come up with a plant which can yield pomato and if it satisfies certain criteria criteria is basically distinctiveness uniformity and stability distinctiveness it has to be new definitely pomato is not there it has to be uniform which means if i use that plant 
or that seed say in one hectare, then at least 99% of the plant should give me pomato. It shouldn't be that 80% gives potato, 10% pomato and all. So it should be uniform and it should be stable. Like it has to, even the next, if the seeds come out and I use that seed for the next uh, crop, it has to be stably expressed. So those kind of crops and, and the plants are being protected on the plant varieties. And depending upon whether it is a tree or a new plant variety, the number of years also vary and the rights also vary. So this is with respect to plant. So, so far I've given an introduction or give, taken you to IPR, given you the concepts of IPR. And um, IPR management is again a big uh, field. That means if you have a copyright, if you have a patent trademark, how do you manage? How do you exploit this? Is you can actually, you have the right to prevent anybody else from using it freely without your permission. And you can grant license. So if you have, you make a short movie, obviously you put it in YouTube, YouTube is giving you revenue. But if you, if somebody else is also using that, you can give them the license to use it. So you grant Netflix or anybody the license to use it and they give you back money, right? Then right to surrender. Sometimes you can say, I can, I am going to give it freely to the world. So I don't want an IP. That is also your right. You can claim that right. Second is you can file a case and get damages. If somebody misuses your document or your innovation or your trademark, you file a case and you can get up to three times the damages, right? The damage cost is five lakhs. You can get up to 15 lakhs. So those are the rights of an IP owner. And a good IP strategy for any company or any institute, any entrepreneur or a startup is, it has three important things. One is definitely the innovator. He is the most important person. He is to be a creator or an innovator. And then it is legally protected. So you need uh, somebody with a legal background to protect it and uh, get it granted. And then you need somebody with a management background to make money out of it. So even if you've turned it into a business, it has to have the application of three unique fields, innovation, the management, uh, and then the legal production. Now, I know each of you could fit into one or more of this particular tab tabular column, could be a student, a researcher, innovator, startup, or an organization. Now, if you are a student, for all the students, the most important thing is you have to understand the basics of IPR. In the world today, which is evolving at a much, much faster pace, every minute there's something new that's coming up and there is something, some new way of even protecting it. So if you don't understand even what is IPR, then that's actually um, you know, a very bad offense that you go that you make it on yourself. So at least you should know what IPR is and what is the professions of IPR. As a student, you can also choose to have a career in IPR. You can be the, you know, a person like me or somebody else who protects IPR. So that is also an option. If you're a research scholar or an inventor, definitely understanding IPR is important. Over and above, you should start applying the principles of IPR. So you're working on a project. You definitely are not going to repeat an existing project. You're going to do some change, right? You're going to do one or two change, and that change will lead to a data and inference. Now, that small thing, if it is protectable, you have to file a patent for it. And you have to apply the principles while you're designing your inventions also. Then protect your IP, definitely try to monetize your IP. So see how all you can get revenue out of it. If you're a startup or an entrepreneur, understanding is important. First, you evaluate your business idea and protect your IP before you invest in your company. Because if your company is more about uh, that concept, then if somebody else, after you starting up the company, if somebody else copies it and they come up with the concept, then you're lost. So first, you invest more on protecting your IP then you invest on the brand and then you brand your company along with this product or your service. If you're an organization like yours, then definitely you would have already set up the Institute's Innovation Council. Now, what should the Institute Innovation Council do? They have to empower you with the awareness, which is what exactly they are doing. But over and above this, they should have an innovation flow wherein each department should be given uh, a target of creating n number of innovations. And the HODs of each department should represent at least one innovation for patent to this 
innovations council the council will have a method in which they will select one or two or three based on the budget based on the institute's uh, you know ability and they have to say that okay this time oh, this innovation from the biochemistry department or from the electrical engineering looks very good we should go for a patent in the name of the institute so the whole process continues for at least 3 4 years and at the end of fourth or fifth year when you have a bunch of patents granted you know look at collaborations with the corporate where you try to sell it to them or you try to have royalty or revenue from them and start monetizing creating a stream of revenue for your institute as well so that is how ip you know depending on where you are from you look at ip from a very different perspective again key issues faced by institute is they cannot have a dedicated ipr cell because see uh, it is very costly um, to have a full fledged ipr cell but you can always outsource the a small part to the outside and keep doing the major part within your organization so it becomes cost effective so you the entire process of an innovation cell to be identifying the patents and everything and just outsource only that work that you cannot do within like just filing the patent rest of the work if your faculty is trained and if the faculty is able to get it done within your institute then that is the feather in the cap and your institute over the years will become a much more towards driving towards innovation now about us we are a decade old company and we have uh, successfully collaborated with a lot of corporates and institutes in filing their patents protecting and granting their patents and also worked with a number of um, techno assignments like where individual patents are being acquired by institutes and this is called technology transfer and monetization of uh, lots of technologies so this is about us and these you can learn about us from our website too so if you have any question i would be able to answer it now Ma'am, uh, this is Kavita here. Yeah. Uh, thank you, ma'am, yes, for the wonderful you. session. I have a question. Like uh, um, at the student level, ma'am, what will be the uh, uh, means value addition if they are uh, uh, getting towards the uh, patent rights for their innovations? Means uh, that uh, needs to be there for the students. Like how it would uh, improve their uh, career and uh, the future of the students so that uh, point if you could share a few tips uh, it will be helpful for our students sure uh, basically see from a pure uh, placement perspective so when an organization and comes and look at what is there within the individual they are looking at first is your communication skill then is your problem solving skill now how do they evaluate about a problem solving skill is if you have done any innovations in your exposed time you are exposed for four years at a particular college or an institute where you have time and and assistance from your to you know teachers to innovate something so it could be small but what you are thinking is very small it is not noticeable but there are lakhs of patents filed in a year but we don't see lack of new products so in which only probably 10000 breakthrough innovations the rest of the 90 lakh patents is only improvements every small thing they file a patent application right so if you have in your resume where you said that i have a patent i worked on the technology that shows from a pure placement perspective to your organization that you want to get place that you are the person they are looking at that is very simple i am bringing it as small as possible for them second thing is i have known of cases where students especially the scholars phd they have done they've granted a patent and because of that patent an organization has absorbed them in the board of director so all that organization wanted was they wanted the license to that patent so that they can manufacture the product but they said you don't have to be an employee you will be a board will give you 10% share so the student is now directly the owner of the company if you see because of just one patent application that is also cases where i have worked with now for a student being 
innovator is what is going to differentiate you and definitely no company is going to take you and give you the opportunity you have to differentiate yourself and present to the organi organization tomorrow that i am a problem solving innovator and i know about this so first you have to have an awareness of uh, ipr not just ipr any new technology that comes you have to have you should know about it that shows how well read you will be second is if you are an innovator and you are able to you prove it in some sense that will also be very good for a student from a st pure students perspective um i patent is definitely what is somebody going to look into you and even if you want to branch out to become an innovative entrepreneur yourself you want to start a company again it boils down to what is that new thing that you are bringing to the market to the customer it can be a product or it can be a service right and that how you are going to protect it and bring it so patent is applicable to the students in all these areas great exactly ma'am so that's what uh, students uh, need uh, at this hour to know about how we can build their uh, uh, resume and uh, the career and the future for them so thank you for that suggestion and students and faculty if you have any uh, clarifications you can ask anybody with the queries we'll just wait for another yes ma'am i just have a question um there is an exam called um, patent exam uh, can you say a word on it ma'am sure so this is an exam conducted by the central government i they conduct this for every once in two years and i had a series of webinar which i had in the month of december and january where i was picking up of students who would be qualified who wanted to have a career in becoming patent attorneys etc so i had a few people who registered and we conducted a four month training basically this year the exam is scheduled on may 8 so what we we did for them is we gave them a very intensive four month training to become patent agents and uh, once you clear the exam and you become a registered patent agent then you can start practicing as a patent attorney wherein you can file patents for the company or the institute or for clients etc the requirements is you have to complete 21 years of age and you should have completed one basic graduation like um in science and technology it could be a b bsc um anything it's you have to complete it you should have completed the graduation uh, at least on on the day of examination you should have finished your exam and once you get it clear you have to give them the proof that you are a graduate so that is the requirement and um, this year they have conducting like i said it's on may if the exam and probably in 2024 they will again call for so they you don't need any prior experience any i have this time i've got like six students who have enrolled all of them who have done their be and bsc and into their post graduation so are giving the exam along with their post graduation so if they clear the exam all and well they can start practicing also as along with their education it is not any conflict of interest so that is what is a patent agent examination Ma'am, um, do you, Thank you provide any uh, uh, training sessions on uh, writing this exam? Do you conduct any regular training sessions on, uh, like uh, any yes, academy we, or uh, some? Class? I I don't I don't I don't believe in the concept of an academy per se because um, then it becomes completely only releasing batches of students. Okay. So when the exam comes before that, at least four to five months. we have a session where we call for students we have an interaction and if they are really good students then we take them and we give them four month intensive training like every other day training so close every month we will have around 15 sessions so, so that four, will be online or offline ma'am it will be online today everything is online even your ip filings your here everything is online I, i it's been 3 years since i've even stepped into the ip office so 
everything is online and it will be a online session but we we meet up and uh, there will be a lot of practice exercises and everything that is the only training per se that i do we don't i i don't believe in churning out batches of people and you know money out of it so if you're truly interested then you have to go through the training and come out as patient teacher and that will help us also because you can be a part of our team or, or you don't want to be you can practice on your own so that is a training that we do the other kind of training we do is faculty development programs where the institutes send a group of faculty from each department and we give them a lot of training so they start making innovations from their own department and end of the day the college will have a limit or a target of filing three patents or four patents every year so we train them of how to do that patenting thing how to advise students on finding out patents how to guide them on you know creating innovations and also drafting it so 90% of the work will be done by them and we only manage it from outside so that also we do in collaborations great to know this ma'am and uh, we would like to uh, um, means uh, know when the next batch of uh, faculty training program will be conducted so that uh, we you of us uh, interested faculty will be happy to join so if sure. you could please share the share across the details uh, for the future sessions uh, we will register and we'll do the uh process process ma'am sure i will do that excuse me yes excuse me ma'am yes ma'am this is saumya from psb ac can i discuss the details of my invention with a potential investor before i fill a patent application ma'am um see with any you are not supposed to disclose any invention with any potential investor especially an investor because they'll be looking at the invention per se right so the most important thing is you first you have to once you know this is your invention it is new novel you first file a provisional patent application that hardly cost you around 1600 rupees only you file it then you go to an investor and then you disclose so before uh, you know filing do not disclose it to anybody because it is not protected the only thing it will be protected is if you are disclosing it to your blood relatives that to close blood relatives your first family your mother father your siblings your husband or your son right so that is what will be protected even your neighbor is not protected even your friend is not protected if your friend tomorrow files a patent you cannot say he got it from me okay so it is definitely not advisable to disclose with an investor thank you ma'am Uh, good evening ma'am this is sainath uh, uh, from prince yeah ma'am uh, ma'am i have a doubt uh, whether uh, product manual which is very unique uh, uh, framed by me is uh, copyrightable ma'am yes product all, manual all product manuals are copyrightable you should put it um, basically a product manual is published by the company right so they will generally yes. say copyrighted by the company it will be there see inside a circle so that is a copyrighted material and nobody can copy the same product manual and put copyrighted by another company you can file a case against them. okay thank you thank you so much ma'am uh, ma'am i just have one more doubt regarding that patent exam uh, will students be asked uh, more questions related to their discipline uh, i mean to say if a bsc student with electronics and communication science background if he or she applies for that particular examination um, will the focus be more on the uh, major part or no. i mean no so the question question paper is common for everybody you can be a chemistry you can be a in a, in a engineer or an microbiologist whatever you are the question papers are common for all of you there are two papers paper one talks purely about the law the patent act so there will be multiple choice questions on the act only it you it can it should be done by everybody whether you are a biologist student there no question about biology or engineering there in paper 2 there are case law questions so there will be like if there is a client coming to you like the questions you ask me what will be the advice so there again is application question it is applicable to any stream um, of education background the only part where your technology will come inside is the patent drafting so they'll give you an example of an innovation and they'll ask you to draft a patent so they'll generally give two options one is an engineering concept 
and other is a um, life sciences or a consumer product so that you will be in a position to answer either one apart from that 80% of the paper is about the patent the law and the act and only 20% is technology and that two two questions on patent drafting where you are given choice to choose between your technologies so it it doesn't matter which stream of uh, educational background you come from it's a common paper thanks for the clarification you welcome any more uh, queries from uh, faculty and students Please. Good evening, ma'am. It's Maslin from Prince Sri Vengadeshwara. Hi, Maslin. Ma'am, suppose if we published uh, any patent, how long it will take uh, uh, to get a grant, ma'am? Suppose if I want to apply for a grant for an idea patent, uh, mm -hmm. what is the duration? Uh, See the patent. Take, got it. Patent today they have put fast track. So, if you are an educational institute, you can apply for a fast track grant. The normal process will take three to three and a half years, but in fast track, we are now able to get it in one to one and a half years. So, if it is published after one year, I can able to apply for grant, ma'am. I'm saying one and a half year. No, you you when you say published, is you publish it in a journal? Yes, ma'am. It's already published. Already in a... published. Okay, if it is already published in a journal, see first thing I advise to all faculty is do not publish it in a journal before filing a patent. First, file a patent and publish it in a journal because nowadays every it's, very... it's not in journal, ma'am. Uh, we filed uh, in patent itself. It's published. Okay, if it is if you are talking about patent publication means typically yes, I am saying fast track is. One and a half years from the date of filing itself. So you file the first application in twenty twenty one. By twenty twenty two, June and all, if you fast track, you will get. Okay, maybe you okay, have not done a fast track application. In that case, eighteen months it would have got published. So another one one and a half years, you should get it granted. Um, ma'am, suppose if it is published, uh, what Sorry? what kind of forms we have to submit uh, during uh, grant ma'am don't have to submit anything during grant if it is published to... then you have to get an examination report so once okay. the examination comes they will raise objection if at all they are not satisfied at that time you have to file a reply there is no need of any forms to be submitted you will only okay. submit all the forms at the time of filing nothing else okay ma'am okay thank you ma'am okay We move to the next session. Hi, sir. Uh, do you have any queries? Ah, uh, no, ma'am. Actually, like uh, ma'am is running out of time. I think it's time to okay. wind up okay. the meeting. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, oh, uh, ma'am. I'd like to uh, just a few thank, uh, ma'am. Uh, just to share a few words. Uh, on behalf of behalf of our institutions, I am proud to deliver the vote of thanks on this day, the Intellectual Property Rights Day on 26th April 2022. First of all, I would like to thank uh, our chief guest, Ms. Priya Darshini Shanmugam, founder, partner and director, Pathways Consulting Solutions. We extend a great thanks to her for giving us her value, giving us her valuable time and enlightening, like, enlightening us through this incredible knowledge and experience sharing. Uh, the session was uh, very uh, uh, motivating uh, the faculty and students of our institution and uh, we would uh, hopefully promise you that soon we will also be into the uh, IPR community and soon we can we will also be a part of um, getting innovations filed and uh, moving towards our uh, property rights. Thank you so much, ma'am, for delivering uh, such a wonderful lecture. And uh, next, I would like to thank our management for giving us the support to conduct the program. And I would like to extend a heartfelt thanks to our principals, Dr. G. Indra and Dr. M. Uma, and the both uh, IIC team from uh, PS, the Prince Sri Venkateshwara Padmavati Engineering College and Prince Sri Venkateshwara Arts and Science College. I would like to thank the Vice President, Dr. Hem, Malata, 
Prince Sri Venkateshwara Padmavati Engineering College for making this day a successful one. And I extend my heartfelt thanks to uh, Dr. Subhashini, IIC President of uh, Prince Sri Venkateshwara Arts and Science College for delivering the um, chief guest introduction and also interacting with the uh, uh, session uh, and with the team. And thank you for motivating us in conducting this uh, uh, session along with your team as well as your faculty and students ma'am thank you subhashini ma'am thank you faculty members and students for joining us and special thanks to mr sainath for being here and introducing us to the chief guest uh, because uh, without him uh, we would not have been there to get in touch with you thank you so much sai sir for that and finally many thanks to our chief guest and uh, warm thanks to our institutions management and faculty and students thank you all thank you for joining thank you ma'am thank you thank you so thank much you and so much. thank you for your vote that you have taken that you will fall into the ip fraternity soon looking yes. forward for a lot of innovations from all of you yes ma'am yes ma'am thank you so much thank you thank you thank you, thank you. all the best